Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome. Today is September the 8th. It's Sunday afternoon, and um, I have stitching to share with you. I uh, wanted to let you know that uh, I was a greeter at church this morning, and so I went very early uh, to church. So Coco and I went out quite early this morning for our um, excursion. And then uh, when I got home uh, after church uh, and had lunch um, this afternoon, I got busy stitching and um, finally took a, a break and took Coco for another walk this afternoon. So it is a bit later than normal when I come and, and meet with you, but I had to get all my stitching done so I could share it with you today. So sister, I need you to look away because I have a piece that I've been working on for you that I want to show. So for everyone else, here it is. I am so pleased with where this is at. So I put in a picture of my progress where I had been stitching 100 stitches a day on it after I finished my ABCingo call each day and I, I had advanced it quite a bit uh, on this side over here but um, yesterday yesterday I really really put some stitching into this I put 771 stitches in it and I finished all the crosses all the X's and so today I was determined when I got home from church I didn't even do my AB single stitching until after I did this but that's when I did all of the beading and all of the back stitching. So now this is a finish. And I've got to decide how I'm gonna FFO it for my sister. But I just love it. Those colors are gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. So there you go. Okay, sis, you can look back now. <laughs> so once I finish that, of course, um, it was during all of that that I was here um, taking care of Coco. I had to stop and play with her several times and then take her walking. And she's gotten uh, pretty clingy because her dad's been gone for a few days now. Uh, so that's uh, that's been rough. <laughs> but we just finished playing a few minutes ago and now she's napping a little. So I think we'll, we'll be okay. But my call on my AB Singo today was for the letter C and for me that was coastal holiday so I will oh let me see I think I have the picture right here I'll remind you of what that is going to look like I have I've done the three ornaments and I am now working on this cover for the storage box for the three ornaments and so I want to finish that so I can fully finish these for my friend Sandy and so today I just did a small 126 stitches because quite frankly I pushed and pushed and pushed to finish that other piece and so I was afraid I wasn't gonna have much time today to, to vote to this one so I just did I needed a hundred stitches I didn't have it for any other um, prompt that I needed to do any more stitches than that so I just did the 126 to finish up the letter uh, G so there's an S on here and then there'll be um, from the C will be wording as well there are two more of these little changing houses and then there's a whole line of little uh, looks like little birds chicks and uh, like seabirds maybe seagulls and then there's little lobsters um, there's some starfish in here very cute a lot of cute little things to add in um, but right now it just isn't one of my top priorities um, but it could very well wind up on my three months to the finish line this is one I think I might put in there so just been thinking about that a little bit because um, you know I have one more month this month that we're in at the end of this month I start three months to the finish line so I do need to be thinking about what I'm gonna do 
Okay, so that has been the stitching so far today. I need to go back downstairs now and see if my video is finished saving. I'm trying to get it up today. Um, and then, you know, I think I'm gonna take a break. I need to start um, packing for my retreat. And um, I need to start planning what my wardrobe is gonna be and, uh, you know, what's, I know what stitching projects I'm gonna take. So uh, that's easy enough. Um, so I just think maybe starting to pack my clothes would be good. I'm gonna have a couple of busy days next week. I have to get um, pedicure. I have to get Coco to the, her friend's house one of those days. And I have Bible study and I have a Zoom call and I have a call with my sister. Um, I got a lot going on next week <laughs> and I leave Wednesday morning at nine o'clock. So I think I need to get started on that. But thanks for letting me share all my stitching with you. My FO, which I'm so excited about, that is a gift that I wanted to give at Christmas. And now I'll be able to do that. So sister, you'll get to see it soon. Anyway, thanks for sharing my stitching journey with me. And I hope you are having a wonderful Sunday afternoon or whatever day you're watching. But I know I have had a great day. So happy stitching, everybody. Hello everyone, welcome back. It is September the 9th, and I am here to share with you my stitching for today. I had a AB Singo call today for the letter O, and for me that stood for October Wordplay. So this is my second wordplay that I've gotten to start um, while we've been doing AB Singo, so um, I'm excited about it. This is what it looks like. And I had decided um, to leave the colors as close as possible. I'm, I am using the DMC conversion, not the overdyes. But I'm putting it on the same fabric that I was using for the September wordplay. And here is my start on October. And this is 177 stitches. It's just that upper corner, so that's great. I didn't get as many stitches in this new start today as I got into the September wordplay, but that's okay. I um, just wanted to, to get at least the 100 in there, and I did. I got 177 because today was a busy day. <laughs> um, Coco and I have been out a couple of times today, but I've also uh, been out doing a little bit of last minute erranding and shopping, getting ready for my trip. So I am now in for the day and I have um, my stitching caught up for my uh, calls. So I think now what I might do um, is finish up pulling all my packing out together. I've got my cross stitch all packed up. Um, I've got all of my giveaways and things that gifts that I've got all ready to go and, and they're all together so I don't forget anything. And I'm waiting to put my clothes in the suitcase after I take Coco to her friends tomorrow. I don't want to upset her with her dad gone already if she sees another suitcase out. I think it would really distress her. Um, but right now, she's actually napping in the floor. We played hard today. so. Um, she's taking a little nap, which is wonderful. So I'm going to um, pull back out something that I want to put more stitches into. I'm not sure exactly what that's going to be yet. I'm going to look at um, some acrostics and see um, what I might want to pull out and stitch on. I've got to decide if I'm going to... Um, take any other smalls with me uh, to stitch on in the car. Since we're traveling with Harley, I don't, I don't know how much time he might be in my lap or um, I get to play with him. So I may or may not get to stitch. I, you never know. I always let Harley do what he would like to do first because if he wants to be loved on, I want to love on him. <laughs> That's my time to do that. Um, but I will put some stitches in something tonight and um, I'll be happy to, to come and share uh, whatever that might be with you.
So happy stitching and I'll talk to you soon. Good evening everybody, welcome back. Well, I got to stitch a little bit more tonight. I had a Zoom call with some friends and we were stitching and chatting and I was able to put in 330 stitches into my project entitled I Stitch, which is a Teresa Kogut freebie. And this is where I got to. I finished that color 3011 in her skirt so you can see that beautiful design in the pattern of her skirt and I just think it's adorable so um there you have it now the next time I pick it up I can pick another color in that skirt and I can color complete again this is one I'm trying on my um, tablet it's in markup rxp and i'm struggling learning to how to use it i love the fact that it counts my stitches for me but i'm struggling with getting the grid to line up perfectly so you know just got to keep working with it but um i was able to work with that tonight while i was talking with my friends and that worked out really well so I'm going to say good night for the day. I'm going to go uh, love on Coco a little bit and uh, play with her. And then uh, when she's ready, we'll, we'll head on to bed. So tomorrow's a busy day for me. Our letter for AB Singo is the letter N. And for me, that is nativity. Um, and I hate that it's coming on such a busy day because I could have put a whole lot more time into it, I think, if it weren't quite such a busy day but that's okay I have mapped out the times in the day that I have available to stitch on it and I'm hoping to get a little bit more than my hundred stitches in for the day but um, I have a call with my sister Stephanie in the morning and then I have uh, to take Coco out to her friend's house <laughs> tomorrow and um, I also have a big zoom call tomorrow night so now that will be stitching time but I'm not gonna be stitching on nativity while I zoom so whatever stitches I get in will have to be during the day before I take Coco uh, to her friend's house because that takes me um, a good hour and a half to go there and come back and uh, then it will be time for supper, and then I'll be in for the evening, but then it'll be time to Zoom. So most of that nativity stitching will have to be in the morning. So I am looking forward to that. I will, of course, share it with you when that occurs. <laughs> so um, I hope you have a great evening, and I hope to have more stitching to share with you tomorrow. Happy stitching, everybody. Good evening, everybody. Welcome. It is Tuesday night, September the 10th, and I am here to show you my stitching for my AB Singo today. I'm going to take this out of my stand. I just finished it. Um, I had mentioned in my prior segment that I was going to have a busy day today and I wouldn't get to stitch too early, but that the call for today was nativity for in. So this is my nativity from Teresa Wentzler. That's the one I've been working on. And today I started what I said I was gonna start next. I started the back stitching of the wing. So I don't know if you can tell the difference, but the naked eye sure can. I've back stitched all of this top portion of the wing now and I've backstitched all around the outer section of this wing. It's one color. The inner section in here is all a different color. <laughs> but I actually got 154 stitches. Now that's counting for every two stitches of backstitching, I counted one cross stitch. So I've actually put in what, 308 stitches, <laughs> but they're singles. So 154 um, was what I counted for my cross stitches. And I think you can tell that this 
sort of sticks out a little bit better than this because this is what I've back stitched mainly and then just the outer edge of this and it's a very light light color but I think you can still tell that it's there if you compare it so anyway the outer portion of this wing is done when I come back I think I'll do the outer portion of that wing so that I finish that color in the back stitching of the wings and then I'll tackle the inside when I get back but I was so glad that this one was called before I went on retreat and I certainly am glad that I was able to get it done before my zoom call started tonight so I am gonna go do some other things and um, then I am gonna pick out what I'm gonna stitch on tonight and I will get that ready to go and then at, uh, at time for the Zoom, I'll, I'll be ready to join my friends and stitch and talk. I hope you are having a great week. I talked to my husband today. He finished his hike. The section that he wanted to do was a 70-mile section of the Appalachian Trail, finishing in Hanover, New Hampshire. And so that's where he uh, landed today. And he is spending the night in a hotel, getting a good shower, getting uh, an opportunity to have a really good night's sleep, and then he will start traveling home tomorrow. Uh, he and I are gonna be traveling the same day. He's coming home and I'm leaving home. So we are like ships passing in the night this week. But I was so glad that, that he finished those 70 miles. He's been wanting to finish the state of Vermont for the last two times that he's been hiking and he finally did. So very proud of him for that. And uh, he seemed to feel really good and have a great trip. So thank you for the well wishes that some of you've been sending me um, that knew he was on the trail. And uh, I am gonna go get ready now for what I'm gonna work on tonight in Zoom and uh, go from there. I will tell you this, Coco was tickled to death to get to go to Fred's house, but her daddy's been gone a whole week and she's gotten very clingy to mama. So when I let her out, she ran to the dog sitter and then she ran back. She doesn't usually do that. And Giselle couldn't get her to come in the house. She kept running back to me, wanting me, to, she even got back in the car with me. So I got out of the car, walked her to the door and she went on in. <laughs> so I was able to get her to go in without any trouble. I've already gotten pictures from her. She's playing with the other dogs and having a great time. And I know she's only going to be there a couple of days, but she will love playing with her friends. And then her daddy will pick her up. She will be so happy. Well, I'm going to let you go on to the next segment, and I'm going to go get ready for my call and so that I'm ready when the time is right. Happy stitching, everybody. Hello everybody, it's later on, on the 10th of September, and I wanted to come back and tell you what I decided to stitch on with my Zoom group tonight. So I pulled out Christmas Parade. I had worked on it recently, and I knew that I had fill-in I could do around this coat. And so that's what I started out with. I filled in all the white, and then I came down here and I did this boot. And I wound up getting in 356 stitches in this thing, which was great because then I went back and looked at my um, Daily 30 acrostic and I was able to change out what I had originally thought in my head that I would stitch on for an E. And I decided to use this for an E because there's an E in the alphabet and it's right in front of his tummy. So you can see it very easily. There's D, E, and F. So what I did today is I filled in the rest of that coat, as you see, with the white around the trim. And then I put that boot in. And all that together was 356 stitches. So it was a 300, which is what you need for the daily 30 acrostic. And so I was able in my extra stitching tonight to hit one of my prompts in the Daily 30 group, which is great. I hadn't expected to be able to do that, but I am so happy that I did. Now, the letter for ABC Go for tomorrow has been uh, announced by Carolyn, 
and it is the letter P. And for me, that is Penguin Pear, which is a, a hands-on design piece that um, is part of um, the Polar Plunge. So I have pulled it out. I had it in my bag to take with me. I've pulled it out and I've marked the center of where I'm going to start on it tomorrow. And depending on little Mr. Harley, if he's willing to nap some in the morning, I will get that started and get my hundred stitches in, hopefully while I'm traveling. And then I'll just keep stitching on it. <laughs> so maybe I'll get a really nice start on it tomorrow, which will be wonderful. So that is the rest of my stitching for tonight, and I am going to now close up shop. I think I'm going to go watch just a few minutes of TV. It's very quiet without Coco. I don't hear her little feet coming up to say hey. She hasn't come up to tell me it was time to take her for, you know, her, her last little trip outside or anything. I missed her tonight. It's funny how much they really become a part of your routine. But anyway... So, um, I am going to hopefully be able to get some snippets of uh, footage for you as I am traveling and at the retreat. Um, I do want to be in the moment, but when I can, I will try to um, kind of take you along with me when I can. So, look forward to that, and I will talk to you soon. Happy stitching, everybody. Hello everyone, welcome. Today is September 16th and I am back home from retreat and I guess you can hear it in my voice. I talked a lot. <laughs> so I am a little scratchy in the throat. I'm so sorry for that, but I didn't want to wait any longer to film because I lived completely in the moment and the only thing I did was take pictures at the event and I took one video and it was of a birthday party, so I'll share that with you and tell you the story. So, <clears throat> I'm going to walk you through a lot of the events, and our stitching uh, time was very productive for me, and so I am tickled to death about that. Well, let's start. Donna and I left here about 9 o'clock in the morning and um, with Harley, her little precious Harley, and we drove over to um, Montgomery, Alabama, and we got to the hotel, and we were able to check in. Our room was ready, and that was a good thing because we needed to empty out that packed car and um, get make room for Carolyn Zook because we were picking her up at the airport. And so that worked out really well. And then we went to the airport. It's about 10 minutes away. It's very, very close. And we picked up Carolyn, and uh, Harley was her official greeting committee. <laughs> and we came all back to the hotel. It was wonderful. Um, we got into the um, lobby to stitch and visit because the stitching uh, and retreat started at 8 o'clock the next morning. So that first evening, everybody was just talking and greeting each other. And the first two people that I met, I met when we were dropping off our luggage to go get Carolyn. And those two people were Nikki and Hildegard. And Nikki and Hildegard were best friends. And Nikki had messaged me ahead of time and said they were going to be there and they wanted to be sure we got to meet. And we did. We met in the lobby the very first night. And I was so glad that they called out to me and told me who they were. And so we did get to eat with them and uh, share time with them. And um, I'll put a picture in here of me with Nikki and uh, me with Hildegard. So we had a great time, great, great time. And it was a pleasure getting to know those two ladies. And I look forward to seeing them, I hope, next year if not before. <laughs> so, uh, that'll be great. <clears throat> so, Thursday morning, bright and early, we went down to get in line to get in to registration. And uh, it was fast and smooth. We had packets with our name on them. 
and we had which which had gifts and freebies and our name badges and everything in them and we ran and, and sat at a table and Donna and I were privileged to sit with Carolyn Zook and Robin Baker and um, we had a blast an absolute blast so um, the other thing that happened we were saving two seats at our table for two people who when they got there didn't know we were saving them seats and they went and sat with someone else so we had this spot there at our table that worked out perfectly because every year <clears throat> Gary and Ronnie have a beautiful design that they put on a roller frame and they let everybody stitch their initials somewhere on that design so that they have a record of who all came every year. So we put it at our table and as people came over to stitch their initials, we got to talk and visit. It was great. I loved it. Um, <clears throat> and then also when people came to visit, they actually had chairs to sit in. And Gary and Ronnie both came and sat and stitched with us throughout the retreat, uh, as they did with everybody. They went to every table. Ronnie cracked me up. He was stitching five stitches and then moving to the next table so he could go to every table and stitch. <laughs> they are such great hosts. I'm telling you, they do a great job. So the first day, we got settled, and I looked at the AV Singo call for the day, and it was the letter P. And for me, that was Penguin Pear. And so this was a new start for me. So I pulled out my penguin, uh, my blue fabric to start my penguin pair. It's on the same fabric that I've been stitching the others on. And this is what I got done over the course of the day. I stitched on it that day. So I feel like that's a good start. I felt comfortable with that. And, um, and then I put it away. So I tried to hit my... Uh, goals. I actually stitched 352 stitches in this because I was using it not on, only for AB Singo, but also for my daily 30, which needs 300 stitches. So when I hit 352 <clears throat> and it was time for us to go eat, I just stopped and I put it away and I didn't pull it back out for the weekend. So that's where I'm at with that one. We'll do more on it soon I hope <laughs> so then on the um, the hotel that we stayed in uh, was not open for lunch so we wound up going out for lunch or eating something we had brought with us you know to fix for sandwiches or, or uh, meal bars or whatever people wanted to do and um, but at dinner we went to the hotel because it was right there we could eat quickly and then we could just go right back into the stitching room the stitching room was open till midnight so I will tell you Donna and I did shut it down the first night with Gary it was just three of us left the second night Donna and I went to um, bed about 10 30 I guess or 11 and uh, we shut it down the last night so <clears throat> We were there late, late stitching two nights, and the other night we just, with all the travel and everything, it caught up with us. So on September the 12th, the letter that was called for AB Singo was the letter A, and for me, that was a new start as well, and it was in autumn. I hope I'm saying that correctly, but it's a tra-la-la -la pattern, collection tra-la-la. -la. That's the pattern itself. And I started on it, and I stitched on it, and I stitched on it a lot that day. But then I put it away and did some other things because I got really frustrated, and I'll show you why. And I'm hoping that I can fix it. But <clears throat> here's where I got to. Now, this is with uh, two different stitching sessions on this. I stitched on it one day and then I later on in the weekend I pulled it back out and I stitched on it some more because again I wanted to use it for my daily 30 uh, cross stitch and so I wound up getting 326 stitches in it for that day and then later I used it again for uh, the daily 30 and I had to get more so um, let me see if I can tell you when I did that I did it on the 14th, and I got 596 stitches on the 14th. So, I stitched on this on the 12th and the 14th. And that's where I got to for that new start. 
feel really good about that. I feel like I've made progress on it. But I mentioned I got frustrated. <clears throat> One of the ladies in the retreat made beautiful cookies that were iced. And um, unfortunately, there was a piece of icing that had gotten on our table that I didn't know about. And my floss, as I was stitching next to the table, apparently hit that piece of red icing. And when I pulled it through the fabric, it got on my fabric. And I tried my best to get it off. But uh, I hope you can see a little bit of red right there. So I'm going to get some of Grandma's uh, stain remover from Joann's today, and I'm going to see if I can't get that out. Um, I consider just turning it upside down because I was just right here when it happened on the moon. And so I had only stitched from here to here. <clears throat> and I could have just turned it over and started it on the other end. But I hated to do that. The, these are variegated fancy flosses and I didn't want to waste all of that. And I do think it's so light that I might be able to get it out. So I'm not gonna stitch on it again until I see if it comes out because I don't want to put any more in it if I do have to start over. I'll let you know how it works. But one of my um, friends from last year that was a table mate last year, Diane McClure, uh, said that she really thinks it will work and that it won't make my fabric or my floss um, bleed. So we're going to try it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try it. She really highly recommended it. So I am going to try that. So there we go. So then <clears throat> I had a piece with me since I got discouraged on that in autumn because of the stain on it. I had a, peach, a piece with me that I've been stitching on and I decided to just pull it out and put some more stitches in it until I knew what the call was for the next day. And this is I Stitch by Teresa Kogut. It's her freebie from the market in 2024 the Nashville freebie. I think you can still get this on her website. And I put 700 stitches in this piece that night, 455 stitches in it on the 13th, on the next day. So, here's where I got to. The lady is completely stitched, she's finished. And so now what I have to do, in addition to the little top two uh, screws on top of the hoop, is I need to go over here and do the lettering and the pin cushion. So I would say I'm at least halfway through, if not a little more, but I would say halfway for sure. So I finished her entire skirt and her legs while I was there. That was kind of my goal was to get that skirt finished. And it took me two days, but I got it done. And I was really, really tickled with that. So then, <clears throat> the last um, new start for the uh, bingo call, well, no, it's not the last one, I'm sorry, the next to last new start, was for ABC and Go, and it was for the letter Z. And it was my Zephyr Heel Sampler. Now, this was a old pattern. I think it was from 2016 or something, if I'm not mistaken. It is a Summer House Stitch Works. It's called uh, the Zephyr Hill Mystery Sampler. It came out in three parts. And that's what it looks like when it's completed. And each pattern has one of these shaker boxes toppers. And they're, each one is different. Um, but I just thought that was an, the most unusual sampler I had ever seen. And it says, the wind blows where it, where it wishes. And it's just got all these pinwheels and things on it. And I just, I love the color palette. I thought it was really pretty. And it's a smaller sampler. It's not that large. So I, again, stitched 357 stitches on this to get a good start on it. And I got the border done for that part one, which is what I was working on. So this is the top and side border. There are some pinwheels down here, but I'm gonna stitch it from top down 
um, and then put the pinwheels at the bottom. And so that is the beginning of that one. It's 357 stitches, completed the border, and I uh, felt that was a great start for, for the retreat. Okay, so the letter called for the 14th of September was the letter E. And for me, um, on my form, that was Miss Christmas Eve. Now, because I didn't take it with me because it was so big on my roller frame, um, I stitched in autumn while I was there, which has an E in it. But <clears throat> I wanted to do uh, my Miss Christmas Eve and post it. So when I got home, I put 100 stitches in it um, over in this corner. I actually put in it 137. So <clears throat> right over in here, I started filling in one of the colors in this bow and uh, I did a little more of this green color. So I got two colors in there, 137 stitches. And it was just so that I could actually touch what I had put on my form. And I did um, post it as well. So I did want to include that because I did work on it even though I didn't do a lot on it. So <clears throat> this Christmas Eve. Now, the last start was yesterday, and we went into the stitching room yesterday. It was actually going to be open until 2 o'clock, but so many people were traveling yesterday. They had flights out, or they were getting on the road for a, a bit of a drive. Donna and I had to drive about three, three and a half hours, um, so we were going to go down and stitch just a little while, but we knew we had to check out of the hotel by 11, and once you check out, you don't have anywhere for Harley to be except in the stitching room, which nobody seemed to mind. Um, Donna put Harley in doggy daycare while we were there. Um, she would take him over in the morning before coming to the stitch room and then go pick him up about four or so in the afternoon and take him for a nice long walk and then um, bring him in the stitching room to say hey to everybody and then she would take him back up to our room and feed him and let him rest because Harley is very social and he played so hard in that daycare, he just about fell asleep in her arms in the stitching room every night. <laughs> so that worked out so well. But as Donna said, you can tell who the pet owners are because they come running. And Harley was the hit of the event, I think. He, he had so many visitors and so much love. And he's, he's happy with every bit of it. <laughs> it was wonderful. So, um, the last day we knew we couldn't stay very long because once we checked out, Donna did not want to bring Harley in the stitching room for any length of time because she didn't want to um, make it difficult for anybody that doesn't like pets, you know. Although he's hypoallergenic, and he's very quiet. You know, some people just don't like it. So she was trying to take good care of her dog, but also be considerate of others as well. Uh, so I think she struck a great balance with that. And um, so that morning, we decided we would uh, walk Harley and then go to breakfast and stitch a little bit. And then we would check out about 1030, say our goodbyes, and get on the road about 11. And that's what we did. So I started my final um, new start, which was for the letter G on my AB Singo, and it was for my spring green pears. And I started it there, and I stitched about 114 stitches there, and then I came on home. So when I got home last night and I took everything out, um, I thought, you know, I just did, I didn't get as much on this new start as I did on others, and this is a really simple, small pattern. So I decided I was gonna go ahead and stitch on it a little more. So here are the spring green pears. And I chose to do the very first one, the birds. And I got this beautiful 
um, Atomic Ranch fabric called Wild Mint. It's Lugana, 32 count. And there is my start. So I did 258 stitches on that so far. And the reason it's still in the key snap is that it is on my daily 30 acrostic. So I need 300 stitches. And I hit 258 last night and then um, decided that I had been stitching up here for you know, a little bit. And I said, okay. I miss my hubby, I miss my dog, and they had come back from a long walk. And so when I heard them come in, I just closed up shop and went downstairs for the night. So I didn't get a lot of stitching last night. You know, I just went ahead and, and visited with my family. So I've got it out today. I would like to go ahead and get the uh, remaining 48 stitches in this so I can post it for my Daily 30 group. And then I can pull the letter that's called for today. And the letter called for today is F. And my F was Forever Friends. And you know I finished that if you've watched my video. <laughs> so I looked through my project cards and I had two or three choices. But the one I chose to do is Shakespeare's Fairies. And the F is for Fairies. And so I will pull that out today and get my 100 stitches in it at some point. But I want to finish this first because it's out. The threads are out. And I want to stitch on it. So that's what I'll be working on first. So I mentioned we had a birthday party. Uh, this was so much fun. Carolyn Zook's roommate had a birthday while we were at retreat. And um, we were getting ready to go out for lunch. And Carolyn mentioned it was her birthday. And Donna and I looked at Carolyn and said, oh, well, then let's all treat her to lunch. You know, let's don't tell her. Let's just surprise her. So we went to a local Mexican restaurant that was quite good. It was not that far away. It's called Jalapeno's. And we walked over to the restaurant together, the four of us, and we ordered our meal. And when the tickets came, both Donna and Carolyn reached to grab the ticket for the birthday girl for Karen. And um, as it turned out, the waitress was kind of surprised, you know, and jumped back. And we said, oh, it's, it's, we just want her ticket because it's her birthday. We don't want her to pay for her lunch. That's all we said. We didn't ask, do you do anything for birthdays? Nothing. So a few minutes later, we're waiting on our checks to come back. And we think, oh, that's taking a few minutes. And then we look, and here they come, a whole line of them. And they had a plate with a sopapilla on it that had whipped cream on it. And they brought it to the table and they presented it to Karen. And the waitress actually took a piece on a fork and to feed it to her. And Karen was sort of, I don't know if I want to do that or not, but she was a good sport and let her put it in her mouth. And when she did, the waitress flicked the whipped cream onto her nose. It was so funny. Karen was so shocked and so tickled and just, I'm so glad she took it well because, you know, we didn't ask them to do that. We didn't know they were going to do it. But Karen loved it. And as it turned out, I just happened to be filming. So I'm going to put that little video in right here. Happy birthday to Happy birthday to Needless to say, we had a good time there. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. So the minute we got back to retreat, Carol and Zook posted that in the Facebook group. Donna, uh, I had sent each of them a copy. Uh, Carolyn had edited herself out of the video because she didn't want to be seen. <laughs> Mine had everybody in it. So Carolyn put her edited version out there and Donna said, oh, no, 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 you're not getting away with that. And Donna put the full version out there, which shows Carolyn in her chair as well. And um, that was funny. Carolyn was like, I can't believe you did that. It was, we were, it was all in good fun and everybody loved it. But it got a lot of views in our Facebook group. So now it's going to have a lot of views on here too. <laughs> so Karen, I'm so glad we got to celebrate your birthday and, and you during that time. It was such a pleasure to meet you. So we stitched, we visited, we talked, we had events. They were all so well done. Gary and Ronnie do such a great job 
have given us things to do and things to look forward to, but they don't take a long time. They, they do them very well, very um, organized, so they, they are quick and fast moving. So we had a um, Smalls Exchange, and the Smalls Exchange was, you know, stitch anything you want that you feel like is wild in your opinion, and um, that you would, uh, you know, find in the wild or whatever. And it had to be no larger than six by six. That was your stitch piece. So everybody brought their um, exchange pieces early Friday morning as they were coming in and put them on a table. And when you put it on the table, you picked up a bingo ball. So the number on the bingo ball was your number. And whenever they called that number playing bingo, you got to go up and get your package. You picked which one you wanted. Otherwise, everybody was playing bingo. We all had a bingo card. And so as they're calling the numbers out, we were going up. We were marking them off our cards. And then when they said your number, you got to go get your gift. So even if you didn't participate in the exchange, you got to play bingo and they had prizes. So that was great. Everybody was having fun during that event, not just those of us that were getting exchange pieces. So my friend Donna had stitched a beautiful parrot of Biscornu and she wanted to wrap it in, in such a way that it was really different and tantalizing and see who was brave enough to pick it up. And so she bought a, um, a little martini glass at Hobby Lobby that had parrots and flamingos on it or something like that. And she got the ice, um, the little uh, plastic things you freeze so that your ice doesn't um, dissolve and melt down your drink. And they had um, parrots, I think, in them or something that she liked that went with the glass. And then she got two placemats that looked like palm fronds and she wrapped everything up. She put the Viscornu in the glass and wrapped everything up almost like a pineapple shape in these green palm brand, you know, leaves, placemats. That's how she wrapped it. And so it didn't take very long at all before somebody grabbed that. They, the lady who got it said, I can't wait to see what's in here. This is just so different. And I'm so happy that she did and she liked it. And um, I've got a little video um, showing you what I did with mine. I stitched Chubby Bird because you find birds in the wild. And then I put it into a finish in um, what I think is a candle lantern, is what you call them, but it was glass all the way around. I wanted you to be able to see the finished piece, 360. And so I'll put in my clip here of uh, when I fully finished it, showing it to you. I said I would show it to you later. So I'll insert that here. Hello everybody, welcome back. It is much later in the day on the 27th of August. And I have um, recorded this little video to show you my exchange gift for the Stitching in the Wild gift exchange. And um, the theme, of course, is anything you would find in the wild. So I decided that I would stitch Chubby Bird, and I did, and this is how I finished Chubby Bird. So I have Chubby Bird placed in a beautiful lantern holder that I got from Hobby Lobby. I have moss in the bottom, and then I've put these beautiful um, uh, flowers and greenery in there that sort of mirrors what's in the piece. And this little door opens. If you want to open it and look inside, there's the chubby bird. And on the back of my piece, if you can see it, I'm not sure you can. There it is. I've got greenery. It looks like it's in the, the uh, green leaves. So, there you go. I think you can see that better back in there. That's the back of the ornament. So, there's the front of the bird. And the little door closes and shuts. And the little bird is in the um, lantern. So I was doing that to make it look sort of like a bird cage. Um, 
but I made sure that I had plenty of of uh, greenery and flowers to look like it was in the wild and to mirror the chubby bird piece on the inside. And I like it because you can see it from each angle. You get a little different view. There's the wild greenery. There's the back of the piece. And there's your front. Isn't that cute? Anyway, I thought that was a different finish. I got this little lantern at Hobby Lobby, and I got the um, flowers and fall and uh, greenery, the moss. Um, I have this on a piece of um, floral foam, dry foam. I had to cut it down. I got the smallest half circle I could get, and I still had to cut it down to go in here, but I just wanted a smaller piece so it wouldn't take up so much room on somebody's display. And I just thought that was a different way to display it. I hope they like it, whoever gets it. I have a um, waxer I'm gonna put in here with it that's in the shape of a bird that will go in here as well yeah, in the gift. So there you have it, there's my lantern. And it could certainly hang somewhere uh, for display. So the lady who got mine really loved it, and the best part about it is she's a very big bird watcher. She loves birds, and she puts out uh, feeders every year and watches the birds every morning, and so the fact that she got a bird was wonderful for her. She just loved it. Um, so I got lots of sweet compliments on my finish, and um, I was really, really pleased with how well it was received. So. I hope you enjoy it, and um, I think it'll be an easy thing to put, you know, in a display in your home, and um, I, I just had so much fun putting it together. So that was the exchange. We had a charity event. We were selling raffle tickets for items that had been donated on the raffle table, and the charity event, um, as you know, Ronnie and Gary love to give to the Children's Hospital, the Shriners Hospital, and Wounded Warrior um, and so they have three charities that they do um, support and they give their YouTube money that they make on because they've monetized their channel, which most of us do just to control where the commercials go to try to keep them from interrupting us every five minutes. And they turn theirs in uh, to their charities every month and they show you that. They tell you what they got and they show you how they, you know, split it and turn it in. They're not trying to use that to make money. They want to use it to support their charities. So the raffle sales were for the three charities. And Ronnie and Gary don't want to handle the money. They want it to be completely transparent. And so they ask for volunteers for people to stand up there at the ticket table and sell tickets for, you know, 30 minutes, an hour. And um, we all signed up that wanted to. And so uh, Carolyn, um, Zook, Robin, uh, Baker, and I took a shift. And we took the final shift. And we didn't know it when we signed up for it. But that meant we had to count the money. <laughs> so Gary took us into their shop, which was closed at that moment, you know, into the um, pop-up shop. And um, we used one of the tables there and counted all the money. And I am happy to report that our group donated $1,560 uh, to that um, event. One of the raffle table items was a quilt. It was a beautiful quilt. And Carolyn fell in love with it. And she bought a large number of tickets and put all of them in that basket. Every one of them. <laughs> and as luck would have it, she won it. So I'm gonna put a picture in here of Carolyn holding up the quilt that she is so thrilled to have won and uh, let you enjoy her pleasure at getting it. She was extremely excited to win that in addition to the charity and the bingo and the uh, exchange pieces. We had a couple of fun things where people made thanks for Gary and Ronnie and donated them to them for their shop or just to them personally. And my friend Donna did that. She knows that Ronnie loves patriotic. 
So she took Jan Hicks Creates Pattern E Pluribus Unum, and she stitched it. And she stitched it on a fox and rabbit, fox and rabbit fabric. And as it so happened, Karen and Brandon were there from Fox and Rabbit. Can you believe it? They flew in from Australia, and they were at the retreat with us. Um, so that was a real, real treat. I will have some pictures at the end of us with them. Um, they were so kind to pose with everybody, and they were so fun. And Karen loved Donna's piece on her fabric. And I don't think she had seen that particular thing stitched on that fabric before. And she just, she took pictures of it for herself. She wanted it. But I've got a picture here of Donna with Gary and Ronnie when she presented their gift to them for their shop. So, that is sort of the retreat news. Lots of shenanigans, fun, talking, uh, just, you know, doing great, great things. So, I've got pictures at the end of different folks that I um, was going around meeting with, talking with, that I knew either before the retreat or met at the retreat and got to know them. Um, all of our table mates from the first retreat were there except one. Her name is Sarah, and she had to work. Her mother got to come. Kristen got to come, but Sarah didn't get to come. And so um, I've got a picture of the first reunion of our first-year table mates in here. And I'm going to put it in here so you know that's who it is. Well, as you can tell, I had a great time. It was a fabulous retreat. A lot of stitching for me. Donna got a lot of stitching in, and that's unusual for Donna. Donna's a social butterfly at retreats. She visits and talks. She said she could stitch at home. But um, she stitched quite a bit. It was good. We were having so much fun, I think, with people coming to our table to stitch the initials. We were getting to meet new people every few minutes that we didn't have to go around quite as much, but we did. And then Donna and I gifted everybody a um, gift from us that we had made that were the Oort containers. Okay, sorry for that hard break, but I wanted to go get mine. So we made it with this frog fabric on the outside, and we had different insides. This is one that was our favorite, and then we had a yellow and um, to go with the yellow in here. And then we had a blue. Uh, and we let people pick what color they wanted if they were at their table when we came by. If they weren't, of course, um, we just, you know, left one for them. I will tell you, we used these plastic snaps because they were so colorful and we could put different ones on each one. Unfortunately, they don't hold very well. So we had about four or five that didn't work well. I'm glad we made extras um, because we just let everybody know if yours isn't working, you know, let us know, and we will change them out for you. But that's our little orc catcher, and so we get we gifted everybody one just to say, you know, how much we appreciated everybody coming and and supporting Gary and Ronnie and and uh, getting to meet everybody. So that was great fun. So I think that is my recap of my retreat, and I'm going to probably put this together um, and try to get it posted for you. Um, I am purposely not showing any of the uh, exclusive designs that were offered at the retreat. I'm not showing any haul because I don't want to accidentally show you something that's a surprise for a weekend too. We don't want to mess anything up. <laughs> so anyway, know that we had a great time. We had a great trip back. It um, was threatening to rain and it would spit a little bit of moisture. Uh, every so often, but we were quite fortunate that um, the rain had sort of moved on uh, ahead of us, and we weren't we weren't uh, having to drive through a rainstorm, which was great. Donna did Donna does a great job driving; she's a very good driver. And uh, I held Harley, and for the most of the time, if I could, to give her uh, the ability to concentrate, especially when we were driving through Atlanta. That's always you know a challenge, even on a Sunday, even on a Sunday. So. Uh, fun. We're home safe and sound. Thanks for letting me share so much about the retreat. 
I say this often that if you ever get a chance to go to one to do, even if you're by yourself, it doesn't matter. You're not going to be alone for more than a few minutes. You walk in, you look for a table where there's an empty chair, you sit down, you're going to make friends. You really are. So, I'm going to try to get this put together and uploaded for you and uh, go about finishing up, stitching those 300 stitches on this today while it's uploading. In the meantime, until we speak again, everybody, good health and happy stitching.